competition. I saw Norwood against Glenelg, and really at stake in that match was second place on the Premiership table. There were a couple of late changes made to the Glenelg side. We saw two players pull out from the 22 name. That was Duthie and Walsh, and they were replaced uh, into the 20 by Mark Donovan playing his first league game today, and also by Wayne Henwood. And, uh, as coach Graham Corns has done in the past, he pulled a couple of surprise changes in the original lineup. We actual fact saw Wayne Hamwood go straight into ruck for about 10 minutes with Peter Carey going to a forward pocket. And in fact, uh, there were many, many changes made by coach Graham Corns in the opening bounce. As we said, a breeze worth about four or five goals. Uh, Michael Ash won the toss for Norwood and kicked with the breeze. And in the first quarter, Norwood had their running players certainly moving very quickly, but there was something missing up forward, and that was a player that could find the two big white sticks, because really in the first quarter, Norwood in actual fact kicked two goals, seven, 19 points, when really that could have been seven goals too. I would have lost to count just how many times the Norwood players not only hit the, uh, the white sticks, but also the point post as well, and it could have well cost Norwood the game in that first quarter. Glenelg kicked two goals too. They kicked two of those goals into the breeze in about the first five minutes of play, and then played to uh, play with a man loose in defence. They went defensive. So at quarter time, Norwood led by five points. In the second quarter, Glenelg hit the front at the nine minute mark and really controlled play. And at half time, Glenelg nine goals, eight, 62, led Norwood on six goals, eight, 44. That was a margin of 18 points to the Bays. And as we pick up play, it's the start of the third quarter. Start of the third quarter at Football Park. And after a torrid first half before a huge crowd, 18 points to bargain, Glenelg just in front. I say just because uh, the lead has changed several times in the first half. Copping spins out of the pack for Glenelg and umpire Thorpe blows the whistle and we'll see a bounce down in the square. And it was real final stuff that first half, wasn't it? There were bodies going everywhere and there was a real tinge of excitement in the crowd. Kerry gets the tap on towards Maynard, stolen by McIntosh. He stems the tide and reverses it over the half forward line. Big fly, Mike Lenny couldn't take it. Donovan off hands. First league game today for Donovan and played it fairly well. Keith Thomas, a good spoil away from Stringer. Through comes Rick Nagel, the handball to McIntosh. As usual, between two players, on towards Jarvis. Jarvis is a massive kick going right to the square. Where's O'Dwyer? Absolute beauties in the marking department. Well, chalk up the goal of our driver, give it a McIntosh for, for, for what, what would you call it? Brazen authority. He just charged through people in the centre of the ground, broke two tackles, fed the hand pass across, and the ball went unerringly down to O'Dwyer. It probably was just a long shot for goal in the first instance, but O'Dwyer made it look good, took the mark and kicked the goal. Enormous goal by Des O'Dwyer, his third for the game. Just over a minute into play. And Nord get a valuable goal with the breeze. 12 points the difference at Football Park. Button forces his way through the pack. The ball to centre half forward for Norwood. Who can take it off the pack? Neagle tries to go through. Oh, flashes one out. Here comes McIntosh. There'll be another goal on the board. Norwood, eight goals, eight. Just a goal behind the base. Well, has the McIntosh inspired his team this quarter with what? One minute, 50 seconds of brilliant, uh, straight-ahead, robust football. The only way Gary McIntosh knows how to play. One of those guys I really admire in football because he, uh, he, he ruffles you when you're coaching against him. But as a footballer, and watching him completely with an unbiased point of view, he really is a dynamo, the sort of guy you want to decide. Charged through, picked up the loose ball, or took the hand pass, I should say, and popped the goal through of nonchalant ease. Norwood, 8-8, eight, eight, played below 9-8. Two goals in almost two minutes to Nord with the breeze, and they sneak to within six points of the base. Maynard, Alan Stringer back towards Donovan. He's kicked a wobbly off one out wide. Who couldn't handle it? Gallagher and McIntosh again in the thick of things. Down he goes. Umpire can hear right on the spot. And as we sort ourselves out, Tony Hall gives Macker a bit of a push in the chest, and Macker, of course, the usual big smile. He loves it. He thrives on being pushed around him. <laughs> Umpire can hear the bounce. Carey tapped it out. Simons grabs it. Gee, beautiful interception so far. Gallagher that time. Simons now back in possession. He gets a kick forward. The Bays into attack for the first time. There's a big take. Copping. Stephen Copping from the half-forward flank. He'll move it into the pocket. Stephen Kernahan's there and takes it. Seven marks to Kernahan today. And he'll line up now for his 12th kick. Very difficult against this breeze. What an enormous problem he, rep he represents to any defence, Keith. He, uh, he just bobs up, takes the big mark, just when it's needed. He's liable to pop this through too, don't worry. Stephen Kernahan yet to goal this week. And that just 
moving away, one point only. Grinnell, 9-9 nine, nine now. Nord, 8-8. Eight, eight. Yes, that's a very difficult goal, I must admit. Uh, he's on the wrong side of his body, being a natural right foot kick. And um, he just couldn't spare between the, uh, the big white sticks. Nonetheless, he is presenting an enormous pop to the door today at centre half forward. This is Stephen Conahan. One of Nord's best players to date, Bruce Winter, brings the ball back into play. With that breeze, sport away from Michael Annie, McGuinness off hands. Bart Daniger, someone's lost a boot. Jarvis will fall. Jarvis will take the ball and will retrieve that spare boot. Well, just working out who lost his boot. It's Michael Annie. Uh, Michael Annie lost the boot, yeah. 15 metre penalty. Jarvis puts Nord into attack. Long kick with the breeze to the half forward. Oh, 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 oh. Gee, played it well, not paid. Just held the body out, may have been held with one arm, almost got the one hand. Yeah. Must have been awful close to a mark. And by Thorpe, right on the spot. A pack of players around the ball. Donovan got the second tap. McIntosh goes down. Strong tackle from Stringer. We'll see yet another bounce down. Nord 8-8, eight, Glenelg eight, 9-9. Nine, nine. Still anyone's game. Is it ever? It's really a wide open match at the moment. Carey. Forces it out, looking for Alan Stringer. Gallagher's there, chased by McDermott. Gallagher's hurt in that interchange. Ross is away. McIntosh again. McIntosh into the pocket. Looking for O'Dwyer. Good thump away by Seabone that time. Ross Gibbs from behind the pack gets his kick forward. Up goes Carey with Michael Annie. No mark. Ross, he's bundled off the ball as he's met heavily by McDermott. Play still going on. Down goes Ball Simons holding the ball. Tony Simons will win the free kick. Simons plays it on. Wayne Stringer runs it through centre. Kick towards that centre half forward spot. Kernahan and Copping both in the pack that time. Thumped away though. Now Norwood with a chance. Andrew Jarvis, a couple of grabs. Gee, great hand pass. Now Michael Taylor. Taylor over the half forward line again. Looking for O'Dwyer. Almost another great uh, Greg Thomas. Running fails. Keith Thomas. He missed it. Tried to tap it out. It didn't work. Seabone with the ball. And uh, Norwood nearly just about through that defensive yep. zone there of Glenelg. Just one slight touch of the handball. One of those rare times you see uh, Keith Thomas mishandle the ball. Six minutes gone in the third quarter. Just seven points the difference. Bardeniger trying to take it away. Peter Maynard's ball. Free kick pain. Maynard on the half back line at the moment. Looked about the handball and then decided he's going to kick long towards centre wing. Up goes Big Button. Carey slipped over. Button plays it on quickly. Ooh. It's all Glenelg back there. It was an ill-conceived kick forward, wasn't it? Yes, he didn't need to rush into it either, Keith. Funnily enough, uh, but he did. Maynard runs it out of defence, comes down the grandstand side. Neil Button's there again with Carey. Neither can take it. McIntosh can. On to Ross. He's in trouble. Gets it over the top, though. McIntosh is held without it. Takes it on. Ace. Beautifully given. Chance for Tanner. Holds it up nicely for Ross. He's in bother. Gets it back to Tanner. Tanner can't kick it. What can Macca do with it? <laughs> Get it clear, that's what. A beautiful stone. Oh, Tony. Bad luck. He tried to get a short jag kick to uh, Peter Carey and it just didn't work out. And Michael Taylor, no, it's going to be uh, Neil Button. The just to work out kick. He'll drive it long. It's why it already let out as the kick sits up in the breeze. The big pack will fly. John Seabone. Seabone the mark in the centre. We talked about Bruce Winter being reliable, and you've got to say the same for John Seaboam. Yes. David Kernahan played on, oh, maybe holding the ball. Ooh. Very lucky. Benefit of the doubt there. I think the Nagel playing that uh, extra man in the back line again. It's a difficult work out just at the moment. The diving but, um, mark taken by David Marshall on the centre wing. I'm pretty sure Bruce Winter's by himself on the forward line again up here. Marshall's kick, the driving one, into the breeze, but he's picked out a Norwood Guernsey, Tom Warhurst. Tom Warhurst from centre-half back. Kicks it towards that centre-half oh, forward position. Big <laughs> back, Keith Thomas at the back, couldn't take it. Norwood in possession, Michael Annie. Short step for O'Dwyer. Not going to take this one, Seabone. Goes backwards. Handball back to Ross Gibbs, a hurried kick by Gibbs, goes forward and it's bound to Gary McIntosh. Is out low way, please, Soup, and he finds uh, Michael Ace loose. Gee whiz. Ace will play it onto Taylor, and Taylor That's might be 20 metres out. Well, 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 for a goal that had to come eventually. Nine goals, eight forward. Glenelg, 9-9. Nine, nine. Well, they're playing in the 
fashionable band of football at the moment, uh, Norwood. They really are running in twos and threes, the sort of stuff that uh, makes it hard to stop. And there's Michael Taylor coming from the back pocket. And I think this may have been brought about in some small way by the extra man being played in the back line. I could be wrong. I'm just having a quick look over the ground now. And it's a bit hard to work out the tactics. But Chris Winter is definitely by himself uh, in, in the old forward line. That means they have got an extra man back to the centre themselves. Three goals with the breeze this quarter. Nord doing it well. Gallagher forces it on for Greg Thomas. He's in the spot, but he's got away. And ball's on. Tanner in trouble now. Keith Thomas there to help round the neck. And Nord will go into that full forward position again. Bit of hugging and shoving and pushing. I reckon he put his head down then. I reckon his heart six one half doesn't doubt that sort of a free kick. The ball up may have been a better better um, decision, nonetheless. Done by Rick Janier. I think she knows what he's doing out there. Keith Thomas, short, ball away off hands, there's that wide opportunities. His kick smothered off the boot. Maynard Carey. Cross oh, over the handball. Ross goes down with Seabone. Half a dozen plays over the ball and we'll see a bounce down. So it's desperate stuff, isn't it? It really is. It's a delight to watch, actually, the way these sides are committing themselves. Coach Neil Baum has uh, G'd the players up in the second half. It's a stronger Norwood side. There's only one, one Glenelg player forward or centre at the moment. Marshall forces it away for the base. Simons couldn't take it. Greg Thomas still working hard. Tony Hall for uh, Glenelg. Neck. Picks up the free kick. Played neck. Tony Hall with a free kick in the back pocket area for Glenelg. They're into this stiff breeze. Highly skilled player, Tony Hall. Got a lot to offer. Wherever this ball lands, there's going to be a big pack fly for it. Up well, they Hemwood. all go. Henwood was in the middle. Off hands it comes. Down they go. Snap forward by Glenel. Looking for Kernahan. He's up and down. Couldn't handle it. Michael Ace off hands. Handball goes backwards. Now across the ground towards Gallagher. Gallagher with possession. What can he set up? Never waste the ball, does he? Found Wayne Tanner. So Tanner from the centre of the ground for Norwood. As David Kernahan's asked to go back on the mark, and Tanner drives extremely long. Lanny couldn't handle it through the legs of Stringer. O'Dwyer back towards Keith Thomas. Thomas snaps around the body. He's found O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer's all by himself. He's taken the mark and Hall just gets back there in time to stop him from playing on. That's Bruce Winder, isn't it? That's who it is. It's not O'Dwyer. It's Bruce Winder again. Well, I think you're right. Down in that forward line again. We know what's happened. Wayne Hibbert's come up the ground, obviously, and he's just folded him up. And so we get the uh, unlikely position of Bruce Winder lining up for his second goal, and I think he's got it. Back pocket player Bruce Winder coming up the ground. Neil Barr and Nord are back in front by five points we've played almost 12 minutes Gallagher coming away from the center a strong tackle the crowd won't fall play on's the call long kick by Alan Stringer Bays into attack up goes Kernahan and taking the mark that the weight plays are streaming down for the base it's going the way of Wayne Henwood he marks it a good grab with that breeze. On. We'll play it on and it uh, hasn't come off. Down goes McDermott. Taylor's in there. Henwood also. Still loose and Lord out of trouble. Michael Ace trapped the ball, picked it up and ran with it. Gets it out towards Nagel. Out of wing position. He's fallen over. Good tackle on him by Wayne Stringer. Plenty of pressure out there. Stephen Kernahan to the rescue. He turns it round. Bangs it in towards centre half forward. Mill Button and Henwood. Neither can take it. The ball slowly walked forward, worked forward by the Bays. Jenkins dragged out of the pack. No chance of a possession. Norwood will get out of it again. Jarvis. The handball goes out wide to Danny Jenkins. And Jenkins what with a time. A strong kick over centre wing. Mike Kalani puts the two hands up. In fact, the free kick's going to be played the other way. Oh, gee, that happened to Mike Kalani in the first quarter. So yeah. Michael Murphy with the free for Glenelg. A wobbly old kick and it's given it straight to Tom Warhurst. Tom Warhurst will play it on quickly. He's got Bruce Winter. Now he's behind centre. It's unbelievable, isn't he? Bruce Winter's kicks a wobbler as well. David Kernahan will take that. Be nice to find a body of, uh, <laughs> of your teammates at the moment. Uh, a lot of pressure out there. Uh, Rick. David Kernahan's kick short. Now, see, there's the man that Bruce Winter's actually playing on, I would say. It's Wayne Henwood. Wayne Henwood. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing forward or centre almost. Uh, that's normal. Oh, oh, Stephen Kernahan pushed out. And that was Blake I think in the back of the stand. Stephen probably marked that ball anyhow. Kernahan's going to come away with the ball, and this will be kick number 15 for him. It's a strong one. Up to the square. Big Thompson will fly for it. Couldn't quite take the mark. Greg Thomas off hands. Craig Barn. Barnes kick. He decides to come long towards the grandstand flank. Chance. Well done, Hall. Had only a second.
second league game. Gallagher moves it on. Gallagher has a look. Decides it's going to be one-on-one -on -one with Ross. Wayne Stringer's up to the task, though. Picks up the free kick. Wayne Stringer will come out with the ball in the centre of the square. The base into the breeze. 14 minutes gone. Five points the difference. Towards the outer side. And Scott Salisbury's out there looking lonesome. He's got David Kernahan running with Kernahan now. Long kick towards the pocket area. Marshall. Mark. Oh, almost a good mark. It's going to be yeah, paid. Taylor. Great mark. Experience of the Norwoods defence. One of their better players today, Taylor. So Michael Taylor back in the side this year after his Collingwood stint. Pops it to the outer wing. Big pack there, broken up. Michael wow. Lennon appealing for it. I think he might have got no, this. Michael Lennon's ball, but penalised the side for bringing it back. Because uh, the Norwood lab was on the, on the break. Michael Lennon's kick. Aimed for Des O'Dwyer, two on one. Carey from behind with possession now. The handball speared out to Ross Gibbs. Gibbs got plenty of time. The running player through the centre, Stringer. Alan Stringer over the top to David Kernahan as McGuinness goes by at 100 miles an hour. But Kernahan kicks, looks for Big Thompson and Coffey. Warhurst. Warhurst missed Gallagher completely. Taylor's got to come in. Simon's picked up superbly. Cops it on. Uh, we await the third. Marshall's done it. He's a left, he can kick left foot from there too, Keith will find. He's got an immaculate left foot um, kicking action. I think we'll find him today. He might, he might try check side instead. Or drop punt from that area. So this will be Glenelg's first goal against the Breeze if he can crack it. We're 15 minutes into the third quarter. He's done it. A great saving goal. Happy Bay supporters. See them go to 10 goals, 9. One point up on Norwood. Yes, well, David Masters has been rucked around at the half fourth flank today. And it hasn't been a super, a super successful uh, role for him so far. But nonetheless, he's always a dangerous player. And lurking in the pocket, he took that clever mark. And, and, and more than that, he finished it off with a magnificent uh, shot for goal from the wrong side of his normal kicking action. Great goal, David Marshall. An elk by one point. Carry the tap straight down the throat of Keith Thomas. He found Alan Stringer. And Stringer drives the base into attack again. Looking for Copping. Jack sit behind Copping, he's played it on, he's got into all sorts of trouble, Kernahan tries to pick it up, Winter gets in there as well, the crowd won't hold on the ball, and eventually up by Thorpe is ruled too high, Copping on again, and Tom Warhurst, and we have a nice look at Warhurst's chest, no good argument, simply won't change his mind, Tom Warhurst plays it on, no one supporters don't like it, that could be 15 metres, Wayne Henwood certainly picked it up, Gibbs backs into Michael Anney. The Bays want to get on with this. They against the breeze, but they don't care. They're into attack from this ball. Henwood's is a sloppy kick. A great take from McGuinness. It's unusual coming back. That's sort of a mark. That's sort of a mark. 15 minutes as well. Takes him almost to the half-forward line. He normally always robes the falling ball, but that time he backed the and took it. 11th kick, and it's a nice one too. Sits it up into the breeze. Copping. Off hands. Warhurst can't claim the mark. Jenkins. Lord out of trouble. Short kick by Taylor. will find Keith Thomas. Keith Thomas on the half-back line. Grandstand side. 15. Thomas. On towards Jarvis. Jarvis will get caught. He is so by uh, McGinnis. Too high. Jarvis, a strong kick, good 60 metres, carry front spot, off hands, Donovan's in there, now training Hall, he needs some support, fires it out towards Maynard, Maynard having trouble picking up, Lord getting there yeah. very quickly, and now got possession as well, Vardaniga, all the time in the world, short kick, here's O'Dwyer, oh. Just like a fighter wants to get up off it. He must have made a granite. Oh, <laughs> blimey. Was Peter Carey met him full on? I reckon a brick wall would fall over if Peter Carey hit you that hard. Yep. Lord have made the change. Hind on and Neil Button goes towards the bench as Deso Dwyer lines up for goal number four. The 18 minute mark and they need plenty of them. The last use of the breeze. Deliberate looking kick. Great goal. Split the centre. Four goals to Deso Dwyer. Lord back in front. 11 goals, eight.
football still to go at football park the leads changed 10 times in the game so far at the moment nord just six points up but they're against the breeze the ball kicked out of that pack sees them into attack briefly right tackle simons works it out for the bays and they come down the grandstand side into attack for the first time through maynard taylor can't take the mark mcginnis with him tom warhurst over the shoulder oh steaming through coughing was it gibbs now on the mcginnis this could be the first oh he's missed it one point only five points to the break there's a move by graham corns ross gibbs playing in the forward line Tony McGuinness missing a golden opportunity. Maybe just a little quick to get his kick away. And it looks like Ross Gibbs is on Bruce Winter, would you believe? Craig Baum to bring the ball back into play. It wasn't a point I gather then, Graham. No, it's out of bounds, apparently. My yeah. eyesight must be going as well. Yeah, I thought it was a point, got to be honest. <laughs> so Craig Baum's kick, long one. Carey front spot, button from behind. H trying to work his way through over the shoulders, been ruled. Play that one now, players, so no, I won't get an argument. <laughs> so Mike, we haven't seen a lot of today. No, he's been well, no one's tagged him, but just hasn't done a lot of, uh, lot of, lot of um, receiving of the ball and getting rid of it. Only eight or nine kicks today, and that's a very quiet day for the champion. Michael Annie has taken a mark on the outer side. And he's improved quietly as the day's got on, Michael Annie. A very quiet first quarter, and then slightly but surely got into the game. He takes the ball into attack for Norwood. Against the breeze in the last quarter, looking for Greg Thomas. Can't find him. Tanner. Tanner's worked it on well. Now Nord. Oh, he's fallen over. Straight Tony in. Hall. Tony Hall's fallen over. Lester Ross with him. Ross is first to recover. Now Ross is leg, and we'll get the free kick. Unintentional, but that's the yep. way it is in football. Yeah, that's one of those unfortunate uh, free kicks. They've got to pay it, but it was completely unintentional. Um, good. This won't be an easy kick, and Lester Ross will probably struggle for the distance into the breeze. He's virtually into the teeth of it. This will be kick number six, and Bruce Winter again lurking around those forward lines. Already kicked two goals today as Ross's kick goes towards the square. Wayne Henwood couldn't quite get the second paid the mark. mark. He's been paid the mark, however. We've seen a few like that today that haven't been paid, and Henwood's taken off. He's played on down the grandstand side. Michael Ace in front takes the chest mark. Could this be his big last quarter? Well, he's always dangerous, this fellow. Tenth kick. Looks for O'Dwyer, Look finds kick. him. What a magnificent kick on the move. O'Dwyer's going to shoot for goal, hopefully. No, but he's hoping no one will go back into the square, I'm sure. Michael Annie's there if he needs him. Bruce Winters dropped back into the square as well. As it is, he'll need... Oh. Michael Annie! The only player that could have marked it was Michael Annie, and the finish way the ball fell is remarkable. Now, Wayne Hemmer's doing his boot up now. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Michael Annie's taken five marks today. He couldn't miss this one. Kick number seven directly in front. The Red Legs get one into the breeze and they just sneak away to a two goal advantage. 12 goals, nine Norwood, Glenel, 10 9. Well, I made the point about uh, a minute ago. Michael Lanning has slowly worked his way into this game today. He had a good battle with young Michael Murphy, but uh, Jim Michael Lanning has been by far Norwood's highest uh, mark taker uh, in general play today. And they started off the first quarter with a very low tally of marks, five in fact. But since then, Jim Michael Lanning's had quite a pronounced say on the game. Marvellous mark and an equally good goal. And brought about by Desert Wise long kick in the square. Now we have to see if the exuberance of the Glenelg side can combat the sheer professionalism of the Red Legs. Carey forces it forward. H couldn't take it. Several players trying to take it out, but umpire at Thorpe will ask for it again. Four minutes gone of the final quarter. Carey against Button. Maybe Button the tap, it falls loose. Carey still with possession. Chance now for Maynard. Down he goes. H there with McIntosh and Michael Ace. No, I should say Maynard will win the free Look kick. Look at Tony Hall running down the side of the ground now. They're trying the same tactic as Bruce Winner. So Maynard from just ahead of centre. Oh, sinks it. Long kick towards that full forward spot. Barm was under it. Here's a chance. Ross Gibbs puts it on the boot. And now reply. Six points only the difference here at the park. There's Ross Gibbs kicking one of his uh, <laughs> many goals that he kicks when he's in the forward line. He really is a, a goal sneak of some repute when he gets up there. But he's always played in the back line more times than not. And I must admit that's probably his best position. But the Scott Salisbury out there playing back line. Ross Gibbs uh, is now in the forward line. That's his second goal for the game. And this is 150th match. Back in the centre with umpire Kinnear. 
Six points the difference. Carey and Button. Button forces it forward. Chance for Alan Stringer. Through pain, he couldn't handle it either. Stringer's on the bottom of that pack. He forces it out towards Simons. Simons will fly Tony Hall. Hall fires out the handball to the running player. It's uh, Maynard. Maynard's kicked high and wild to the forward pocket. Thompson uses his weight. Barnes couldn't handle it. Off-hands for this big to McGuinness again. Gives snaps away on the left foot. Boot. Just off line and through for a point. Well, it was almost a take two, wasn't it? Same uh, situation. Forced under his left foot. Ross Gibbs threw the ball to his uh, foot quickly. And this time, through for a point. Barn plays it out. Grandstand side. Gallagher there. Down the wing it comes. There's trouble. Tony Hall. Great courage, this guy. Goes for everything. Tony Hall with a long kick. Thompson in the middle. Oh! strong pair of hands 20 meters out directly in front and this kick would put Linnell back in front it'll be Stephen Conan's first goal for the game it's a point in the second quarter and a point in the third quarter Kernahan's kick strong off the boot three for a goal Linnell back in front 12 goals 10 no one's ball now seven minutes gone and Norwood have the job ahead of them they're against the breeze could be worth about five goals but both sides have proved you can kick them against this one at football park McDermott forces the base forward Stephen coughing within range Linnell on the march and Coffing took that mark the big fellow Steve Thompson jumped about six foot off the ground which made him 12 foot <laughs> jubilation Stephen Cobbing, one goal so far in the game. Lines up for one that will put the base clear. And he's got it. Linnell go to 13 goals, 10. Norwood, 12-9. That was just sheer, uh, what you call it, size against um, a little fellow like Danny Jenkins. Stephen Cobbing in the front just can't be beaten. And even though Danny Jenkins has struggled manfully against him all day and taken a couple of screamers himself, and Stephen Cobbing gets the front spot, Danny Jenkins is immediately behind him. He can't do much else but <laughs> watch him mark the ball. He did that and kicked the goal. The Bays have kicked three goals with the breeze in just over eight minutes of this final term. Button the tap. Again, Glenelg with it from that centre. It's Maynard's kick high and wild. And at the boundary line, will beat the ball as McGuinness comes streaming in. And we'll see it thrown on the half-forward line. Glenelg certainly going to be taken away from that centre bounce yeah. at the moment in this final quarter. Big Neil Button comes in against Kernahan, he grabs it out of the air. Taylor tries to go through, he's jumped on. That's a push in the back decision. The man going past is Keith Thomas, and Thomas will take off the luxury of one bounce. Covers about 30 metres and then drives the ball another 30. Up goes Michael, and he's caught away by Henwood. Chance for uh, Tanner, his kick high. Carey getting underneath it, no talking. Carey really took out his own player there. I think it's Donovan, isn't it? David Kernahan. David Kernahan. Took the mark. Of the play. He takes it to the outer wing. The umpire's called a 15 metre penalty in the bargain. So David Kernahan will take another kick. We just saw a drop kick too. That ball being returned to Kernahan. From the edge of the square, he drives long, covers the square towards the half forward line. A lot of holding on going up there. Stephen Kernahan, Jarvis from behind for Norwood. Oh. Handball's oh. to the line, and that's just about over the line on the page. Out about that one. No. So Glenelg come deep into attack. Huge back flies. But Dermot reads it well, gets a kick away. It's wild. Gibbs chases it. It's deep in the pocket now, impossible angle. <laughs> oh, talk about faint. McGuinness, no chance against the big spoiler way of Jenkins. So one point the result. Glenelg to eight points clear. Wayne Hemmer now playing centre half back on uh, Jim Michael, I think. Craig Barm at fullback for Norwood. Another strong kick out. Bruce Winter with Aish. Winter, McIntosh. Now with Aish. What can Aish create this time? Through centre wing he goes. O'Dwyer's already let out. There's nobody over the half. Oh. Line for Norwood as Aish goes 
short, looking for Ross. Almost the mark, it hasn't been paid. Down goes Michael Lanny. And umpire Thorpe the bounce. Well, Michael Ace ran that ball beautifully then, knowing he had no one to kick to of any consequence. He kept running, trying to create something, and uh, it's good work. Well, the is a little bit uh, puffed out after that effort. More than 10 minutes gone. Eight points the difference. The Bays are up now. Kick comes out to their wing. Oh, that's got to be a free kick. And then he didn't go for the ball. Maynard, meanwhile, forces it forward for Gunnell. McGuinness out on his own. Half forward line. He can work it all the way in if he wants to. That's what he'll do. He pops it. Some magical moments today with his goal kicking. That was another one. He turned on his left foot at the last moment to really size up the situation and put the straight through the centre. When he runs free of the free of the wind, he's probably the quickest bloke in league football. And he's done it again. That's his um, third goal for the game and a real rip tickler. 14 kicks for the match he's had. So Glenel sneak away again and Nord in some danger of losing their second spot on the premiership table. Button and Carey. Carey, the easiest of taps, forces it forward. Jarvis is tackled by Marshall. Now Gallagher. Greg Thomas. Thomas over the half-forward line. Looking for Rick Neagle. Wayne Stringer out there with him. Neagle possession. Hooks it back around the body. Looks fallen away by John Seabone. Payne. Short kick by Mike Lanny. There's nobody out here except Tony Simons for the base. Simons will have time to pick up, have a look, come down the grandstand side. Maynard unattended on the wing. McIntosh onto him now. <laughs> 15 metres. Maynard fainting, not quite playing on, said the umpire. So he goes forward, not for long. Tom Warhurst at centre half back. Nord need goals as Craig Baum runs out from full back to take possession of that Warhurst kick through the centre of the ground and another kick. massive kick into the breeze Henwood couldn't handle it Carey two or three grabs O'Dwyer's there oh, it's almost four. picked up by David Payne he fires away there's nobody home although Aish and Hall getting back there now Aish good sport away by Hall through comes Salisbury Aish has still got possession and the umpire's going to pay the free kick too high Neil Baum shrugs the head as do the many thousands of Norwood supporters here Salisbury the kick from that full back line Lester Ross, desperate, play it on, says the umpire. Well, he put the, the arm Lester out to the mark. I think he made his number taken there. Oh, the umpire had a close no, no, no. I think he, 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 he had a bit he of a look. Didn't take that. Number, no. well, I don't know what he wanted to look at his back for. <laughs> now he's playing the... Uh, it was very unfortunate <laughs> that he did get recorded because I think he marked it. Now he Ross too. This is where we were a minute ago with Ross taking the mark as he goes short. Looking for Michael Annie. Seabones falls away. Salisbury. McGuinness. Maynard. And Glenelg run again. Long kick by Maynard. Stephen Kernahan's going to set himself. Warhurst front spot. McDermott. Oh, that slipped back into Warhurst. And the free kick's going to be paid. A bit unfortunate there for Warhurst because McDermott really just ran straight into him. So McDermott from a little behind half forward puts in a good kick all the way to the line off the pack it comes danger here Stephen Kernahan's got it and he's got a goal well, what a great goal by Stephen Kernahan the crowd tells the story Glenelga getting away with this game 15-11 Norwood 12-9 well, listen a great goal there to Stephen Kernahan and a great last quarter by Glenelga they kicked nine goals in that final term to run out winners by 40 points 19 goals 13 127 to Norwich 13 goals 9 87 McGuinness got four Gibbs and Coffing three Stephen Kernahan two while for Norwood O'Dwyer four Michael Annie and Winter two the stats from that game this afternoon kicks Glenelg 218 to Norwood 191 the mark 79 to 57 Hamburg's 93 to Norwood's 114. The free kicks, even Stevens, 27 apiece. The rucks out of centre, 24 Glenelg, 12 Norwood, and the scoring shots, 32, played 22. And after the game, Keith Collin spoke with Glenelg coach Graham Corns and Norwood's Bruce Winter. Graham, congratulations. Uh, I guess a lot of Bay supporters might have been uh, a little concerned at the loss of two of your stout defenders in Walsh and Duthie at the start of the game. Well, they've both been playing very well. Um, Chris Duthie has been very good as a fullback, and, and Gavin Walsh, I think, is probably one of our most improved players, and he's just got that touch of class about him. Um, and they both had to pull out. 
unfortunately. But in one sense, we had to bring Alan Stringer back. So it created, we would have created a problem with both of them there. And, uh, and young Mark Donovan's four more years as a, as a young developing footballer has been terrific. So, you know, someone's misfortune is someone else's opportunity and it allowed us to have a look at, at young Mark and he acquitted himself very well in, in a pressure, pressure game. You must have had to think about the tactics with the strength of the wind today and it looked like you had a move on uh, with the Carey Henwood move early in the first quarter. Well, Wayne Henwood um, is the sort of player that can explode in, in sort of a, a half a quarter or five or ten minutes and, and his, um, his, his start to all these games has been very good and Peter Carey in the forward pocket always gives us something to kick to so uh, it's unusual to, well I must say it's unusual, we have started with Wayne Henwood on most games so yeah, it's paid dividends over the last two or three weeks for us so, so we thought we'd try it again today. It certainly paid off but then uh, you deliberately went defensive, the breeze obviously played a big factor in the game. Well it was very strong and, and we just don't seem to be able to win a toss, I don't know, I don't know why. Peter Carey in his earlier days was a, was a keen gambler and he used to always win. <laughs> Since he's reformed, we haven't won too many. But uh, I think your chance, you're lucky if you... We, we went 15 minutes and uh, I think we'd scored two goals to their one. And I think you're really chancing your luck against a side like Nord to think you can hold them for 30 minutes in a very in, in strong windy condition. So we did we did then went defensive, defensive in the last half of that quarter. There's... Uh perhaps not much difference between second and third uh, in strict terms about how you play it but you know what's it worth to come second in psychological terms well it's it's important because particularly if it means now you can't be relegated to third or fourth to fourth spot and there really isn't anything because next time uh, if things stay the way they are next next time we play Nord we'll be in a uh, in a qualifying final so um, but it's still important to get up there and it gives you an extra chance to compete for the finals I guess I'd prefer to finish on top. North Adelaide did it pretty well today, so it sort of li that limits our chances of doing that. But uh, second or third is certainly next best. And nevertheless, an important psychological boost to have beaten Nord and beaten them well at this time of the season. Well, they're always dangerous, and uh, it was an important game for us to win. It um, was obviously a hard game for Nord, and especially that last quarter, the Bay just went away from it. They're going to be a side you meet again in the finals for sure. What have you got to do next time? Oh, I think uh, perhaps be a little bit more committed in the first quarter. I thought we were a bit lax in the first 15 minutes, and I, I got a feeling they were actually a couple of goals up about 15 minute mark. And the breeze was quite strong, so he wasted their opportunities there. Perhaps kick a bit straighter in the first quarter too. That put us under pressure. Two goals, seven in the first quarter. You could have obviously been a few goals up and might have gone in at half time with a little bit to spare. Yeah, it might have helped us actually, Keith. Uh, but, uh, that's footy, I suppose. But on the other hand, it's obvious that the Bays are very much uh, grand final material at the moment, isn't it? I think so, but uh, you know, like every year, once you get into the finals, it's a completely different ball game. They've got a poor record in the finals. I, you know, they may be a different kettle of fish this year. We'll, you know, we'll know in a few weeks' time. You seem to be suggesting, and the feeling in the rooms is that it's not the uh, end of the road by any means yet. I oh, know. You know, we've, we've got a lot of improving to do. Um, you know, that comes back to attitude from our blokes. We've got two weeks to improve, and uh, we'll be right by the finals. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks very much, Keith. In a great game today, uh, played by Bruce Winter of Nord. Uh, in fact, he was one of three back pocket players in that game today to kick goals. And that's uh, certainly something you don't see a lot of in league football. And Graham, perhaps one of the other interesting aspects to come out of that game was that Glenelg had a full forward by the name of Stephen Thompson, who was held scoreless, had right. two touches, and yet Glenelg looked a convincing side. Well, they did. And, you know, uh, Steve Thompson was there to do a job, ruck work in the forward line, and clap the goal through, <laughs> without being unkind, because, you know, he really did a lot of that today. He got excited and threw his arms up in the air. You mentioned during the commentary, Rick, at one stage, when Steve Cotton took a great mark in front of uh, Danny Jenkins, that uh, the big fellow went berserk. He did. He jumped up and threw his fist in the air. He added a lot of excitement to the place, but he didn't really take any marks of any note, and uh, he only had a couple of kicks early in the game. But, you know, he presents a problem. He's six foot nine. When Alan Gates, his arms is about, about nine foot tall. And uh, with Stephen Kernan lurking around as well, well, the opposition people just can't uh, take their eyes off both of them. And then you've got Stephen Copping who can take a catch or two, can't he, Robert? Yes. So, boy, they've got some power up on their forward line, Glenelg. And if Stephen Thompson ever clicks, 
Well, uh, it's all over. Red Rover. <laughs> no one saw it, obviously. Bruce Willis obviously worked very hard. Looking for that perspiration on his brow there, he'd worked very hard. What about the rush? I never saw Neil Hyde on the telly replay. Didn't play a lot of football today. I, I think he might have got a knock somewhere in the leg area early. I'm not sure. Neil Button did the bulk of the ruck work, and Neil Hyde came on spasmodically. So you're quite right, Rob. He wasn't there a lot today. Do you think the Red Legs have got much more to, to give, really, or are they well, at, at their peak? To be, to be true, truthful about the whole thing, uh, Neville Roberts was out. He must have been three or four goals to them. Des Adwai is there to stay. He proved that today. And, of course, there's Rowan Hallier was out. But then again, uh, uh, Glenog had um, Gavin Walsh out of the, out of the road and uh, Chris Duthie. So you can't really uh, say Glenog were any, any uh, better off than Norwood were with people out. OK, Roberts and Hallier to come back. Walsh and um, Duthie for Glenog. Uh, I don't see a great deal happening that can change things. Or ha uh, can change the scoreline today. Yeah, well, that's how we saw the second game at Football Park today. Certainly a great game, and uh, if that's the taste of the football we've got coming our way during finals time, I think we're in for a great final series during 1985. We'll take a short break, and then come back and take a look at the game uh, between West Adelaide and South Adelaide.